what's happening, Kevin? Another day in paradise, my friend. Thank you for having me. We had a, a pre-call a while ago, and ever since then, I was excited to chat. So I'm excited to chat with you today. I'm excited to have you on. For people listening, this is Kevin Palmieri. Is that right? That is right. The last, yeah. Awesome. I always screw up the last names. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a podcaster. I've screwed up my fair share as well, so no stress. Oh, of course. Dude, t tell me in the audience what it is that you, uh, which, what do you do? Uh, yeah, so I am a podcaster, I am a speaker, and I am a coach and an entrepreneur and a business owner. So I have a podcast called Next Level University. We actually just recorded our 1300th episode yesterday. So that Damn. really is the, the majority of what I do is podcasting. But we've been able to create a pretty successful business from the podcast through coaching and live events and courses and, and stuff like that. So the majority of the time, I'm sitting in front of this microphone talking to wonderful people like you. Uh, some of those wonderful people are paying us. Other people are not. That's that's how we build the business. That's awesome, dude. You said 1,300 episodes. I, I was looking. You, you guys release one episode uh, a day, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Seven that a week. is crazy. Do you record every day or do you record like seven in one day and then just release them? We try to record. So Monday is like the one. Well, Sunday and Mondays are the two days I don't book anything. But Monday, we try to do seven episodes. Does it happen? Not usually because we have other business meetings and we have stuff going on. So then we end up putting them throughout the week. But between our show, I have another show that where I talk about podcasts. And then I'm on probably 10 podcasts a week. So I'm pretty much recording at least one episode every day, depending on, on the week. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Dude, uh, what's the name of both of those podcasts, just for the audience? Yeah, so Next Level University is all about holistic self-improvement, which I'm sure you and I are going to talk about. And then Podcast Growth University is all about podcasting and how to grow your podcast and what really matters in the grand scheme of things. Awesome, dude. So let's get into it, man. Self-improvement. Mm. How, how did you end up in that realm? I Massive pain. You know, I think that's how a lot of people end up finding self-improvement and personal development. They go through some sort of pain, which creates necessity. So I was 25. I had what you would assume was a dream life. I had uh, a model girlfriend. I had just won a bodybuilding show, so I was in the best shape ever. I had a high-paying job, sports car, new apartment, all that stuff. And then my girlfriend ended up leaving me because I was just so depressed and anxious. And I just wasn't a very supportive partner because my cup was so empty. I didn't really have much to pour from. So when she left me, I remember asking myself, okay, number one, who's ever going to love this version of Kevin? Number two, you are at least 50% of the problems in your relationships, right? You've never had a successful relationship. You got to be some part of the reason. So what can we do to improve that a little bit? And honestly, that was the, the very beginning for me was I would, uh, the first book I ever listened to was Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I was like, all right, let I mean, me. Robert Kiyosaki. Robert right? Kiyosaki. Let yeah. me see what this is all about. Like, I don't know how this is going to help me, but, but let me see. And then, then I started listening to Tony Robbins and I started listening to Brendan Burchard and a lot of these, these other self-improvement people. And that was really it for me. I realized that I had done a pretty good job of changing my external life. You know, I looked very successful, but I didn't feel very successful. And I realized that's because I developed my bank account and I developed my car and I developed my body, but I never really developed me, the, the inside, the internal part of me. Mm. And I think that happens to a lot of people. Uh, is, do you think that's like, a, uh, what would you call it? it's like a materialistic mm. kind of way of living, right? Yeah. I think it's hard because the, the truth is most of us, we look at people and we see happiness, right? So if you look at my social media feed, it looks like I have a really happy life. And I do. My life, I have a very, I'm very, very happy with my life. The thing you can't see about my life when it comes to social media or content or, or pictures or videos is fulfillment, there's a huge yeah. difference between happiness and fulfillment. And I think that I had a fast car. That fast car made me happy. There were, there were momentary bouts of happiness. That fast car never brought me fulfillment. So I think it's, a, it's an intention problem where a lot of us are thinking more money equals more options. 100% true. More option, options equals potential happiness. Definitely true. I would agree with that. I do not believe that more money and external 
circumstances, uh, circumstances and external results bring fulfillment. And I think that's where a lot of us get lost. Fulfillment is very, very hard to recognize, but when you feel it, you understand it's something different, where happiness is more results-based. If I get a nice car, I will be happy. There's not really a level of fulfillment there. So, yeah, I think it's an external and internal thing that's going on. I think it's materialistic versus intrinsic, but it's very, very hard to look at somebody and say, oh, wow, they're fulfilled. I'd like to be that too. It's just, I think it's just something that's very hard to recognize. Yeah, it's something that you, you can't see on the outside. And, mm. and like you said, I think happiness, uh, in my experience anyways, happiness is something that's f it's fleeting. It comes mm. and goes all the time. But chasing, like like a lot of us do, for different reasons, and I've talked about this before, is, uh, of course, I want to be rich. Of course. But it's not to have the money. That's not why I want to be rich. I want to be rich so I can tell my wife that, you know, you can quit your job. Mm. That would give me f fulfillment. It's not the money itself. It's what can you do with the money. So yeah. I think money in some way, I wouldn't say it can buy you happiness, maybe to a certain extent, but it will leave you with better uh, better problems. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and more opportunities, really. I mean, yeah, that too. But that that is a very, that's a very good perspective of, uh, my business partner and I were talking about this the other day. We are more financially successful than we've ever been, but we also have more problems than we ever have. And it's like, yeah. that's the stuff that people don't talk about. If you're a multimillionaire, you're somebody who wants to be, you know, you want to have a very high net worth, you're also going to have very high net worth problems. And I think yeah. we forget that because, again, you don't see that on, on social media or you don't see that when people are talking about it. So, yeah, I would say you got to understand what comes with the benefit. There's always detriments with every benefit there's always weaknesses with every strength it's just are we prepared for them and do we understand that they're going to be waiting for us when we get there yeah i've never been on that level of uh, financial success but i would argue with no experience but that just like i said uh, like a problem free life is not any it's not anything you should strive for because mm. it's never going to happen but making a lot of money would depending on how you choose to, to live your life, would give you the opportunity to deal with better problems than you would if you were poor. Yeah, I would agree. But maybe more problems, but also better problems. Yeah, I would and agree. I guess it depends on how you, uh, how you decide to, you know, use the money, use the, you know, freedom that you get with that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So where did you start when you felt like, shit, I gotta, I gotta get my shit together? <laughs> What end do you start at? Because I know there's a lot of people who are like, they want something more, they want something better, but they don't know where to start, how to start. For me, it was very, very, very simple. I started asking myself why. I, I remember feeling like after my girlfriend left me, I went into this like shell. I went into kind of like this hole and, you know, I didn't want to go outside. I didn't want to see anybody. I was just like depressed. And then I remember having this conversation with myself of like, look, today you're going to get up and you're going to put on some nice clothes and you're going to go to the mall and you're going to talk to people. Like, that's what you're going to do today. Like, why are you so afraid of that? Why is that such a big fear? Why are you so afraid to talk to women? Why are you so afraid to ask questions and, and potentially look stupid? And I, I remember when I started asking myself those questions, it's like, I don't really know. I don't really know why I'm afraid to talk to these people. Rejection? It's like, okay, why am I afraid of that? Because I'm going to look stupid in a minute. It's like, okay, why is that that big of a deal? So for me, it all started with self-awareness. It started mm. with why do I feel really good around certain people? Why do I feel really insecure around other people? Why do I feel really confident in the gym, but I don't feel confident when I go to the bank? Why do I feel confident when I go to the bank, but I don't feel confident when I go to the bar? That's really where it started for me because... I think one of the things that happens with a lot of people, and myself included, this is how it started, I was trying to learn a bunch of stuff, you know, TED Talks and all that stuff. The problem is all that information was going into my brain, but it was hitting all my limiting beliefs. It wasn't shifting my limiting beliefs. It was just like, well, yeah, that person could do it, but that must be nice. I could never do that. I could never be that confident. I could never be that certain. I could never be a good speaker like that. So when I started asking why and I started searching for awareness, it forced me to look into my past. I think a lot of us, when we are focused on growth, we're looking into the future and we're focused on the present. 
And those are great. But I think a lot of us, the, the keys to our growth are hidden in the past. That's where a lot of it, a lot of the stuff is. Somebody asked me recently, they said, if you, and this is a very challenging question to answer, but if you only had an hour, if you could give somebody an hour and give them some sort of tactic to change their life, what would it be? And I was like, oh man, I said, I would have you go to therapy or I would have you go to counseling because yeah, you could watch a Ted talk. Yeah. You could read an hour of a book. You could listen to a couple of our podcasts. You know, you could do a coaching call, but if you go to therapy, you might unlearn something that is holding you back way more than you realize in that it's almost like you might shift one card that helps a bunch of cards realign with that one mm -hmm. hour. You might get exponential growth because you're focusing on the past. So that's what I did in the beginning. It, it wasn't as much about learning as it was unlearning. And I know that might sound strange, but that really, really benefited me because I was taking in a lot of information. It just wasn't landing the way I wanted it to. Mm, yeah. I, I can totally, uh, uh, what's the word? I can totally connect with that. Mm. Like, it's almost like bad habits. Like, you have to unlearn some stuff yeah. to to grow and you have to let some stuff go. Uh, you, you said something earlier, like when your girlfriend uh, left you, which was kind of, I think most people wouldn't look at it that way, but you said, I haven't yet had a successful relationship and this is definitely at least 50% mm -hmm. my fault. Yeah which is taking responsibility, which is something I talk about a lot too, or at least think about a lot. And I think it's a very hard thing for a lot of people to start taking responsibility and looking at yourself in that way. Mm. Were you always like that? Like you looked at yourself first, like what can I change? What can I do better? Or did that come along the way of, uh, let's say your f failure with your ex-girlfriend mm. and, and all this stuff? Yeah, I... I initially blamed her for everything. <laughs> when, when she left, I was like, oh, she's crazy, and she wants to chase these big dreams and all that. <clears throat> and then I think eventually it got to the point where it was like, oh, I, I actually tried to hold that person back. Interesting. Like, that sucks to know. Ah, oh, that hurts. You know, I was that controlling. Again, I wasn't, I wasn't bad, but I was that controlling boyfriend who didn't want my, my partner to chase her dreams. Like, that sucks. You know, that hurts mm. to know. So I think... I mean, at that point, I had had five or six long-term relationships, and then I was kind of able to see, like, the missteps that I had. It's like, oh, I kind of screwed that up when I did this or when I said this or I didn't, you know, I didn't communicate that well. But no, I, I don't know. I think it takes a certain level of confidence to take ownership, I think, because when you take ownership, you're basically saying, yep, that's on me, that's my fault, and now I can do better. I think it was just the right time for me where I actually felt confident enough to say, you know what, let me own this because if I don't own this, I can't really change it. And if it's somebody else's fault, it's somebody else's responsibility to change. I can't, I can't fix this. So it just came from pain. It came from necessity. I knew at that point I thought I was, I thought that was it. I thought my life was going to go in that direction. I thought, you know, I was going to be with that person. My job was crushing it. That was going to be it. And, when you get all that awareness at once, the only, the only wrong answer is to change nothing. So yeah, I tried to say, look, what, what part did I play in this? And as much as it sucks, as much as that's a mirror, you can't really change what you don't take responsibility for, unfortunately. Yeah. That's a great way of looking at it. Cause everything, I mean, you can, you can be mad and sad and, and blame everything in the world, but at the end of the day, all you can do is, you know, control the things that you actually can control, change what you can change and do so, do something better, you know. Yeah. And I think you touched on confidence there, too. And this is something I wanted to ask you, actually, because I feel like a lot of people struggle with confidence. And I've dabbed a little bit. I read a little bit about it and talked to a few people about it. And uh, my conclusion is that co like real confidence must come from competence on some level. Mm. Right. But there I found I find a situation that I think a lot of people struggle with is if you are very not confident, it can be very hard for you to go out and actually become competent because mm -hmm. you do that through actually trying. And most people are too scared because they're not confident or they're not willing to suck at something. What kind of 
advice would you give to someone like that? Someone who's stuck in that pattern. They always, you know, the self-talk, how it sounds. Oh, I can't do that. I've never done that before. Mm. I want to do it, but I can't. I'm not confident enough to try it uh, because I've never done it before. Yeah. Well, if you've never done it before, I, I, you, you have to start somewhere, right? Yeah. What would you say to someone like that? I think... Um I think many of us have been lied to when it comes to goal setting. Uh, a lot of people are like, you'll see these quotes and you'll see these memes and they look really good on paper and they're inspirational and motivational to people who believe in themselves. If your goals don't scare you, they're not big enough. Yeah, that's not really that good though. That's not yeah. really good for most people because if your goals scare you and you don't have the confidence to your point or the competence to start chasing them, they're always going to seem unachievable. So what I always tell people is you have to break things up into the smallest possible segment where somebody comes to me. If somebody comes to me and says, hey, I want to be a speaker. Awesome. Great. That's, that's great. The next thing they usually say is, but I can never speak on a stage in front of, you know, say a thousand people. Like, okay, why is that your goal right now? That shouldn't be your goal yet. You're, you're trying to, you haven't learned to swim yet and you're already worried about swimming in the Olympics. Of course, that's going to scare the hell out of you. That would scare the hell out yeah. of anybody. I, I always tell people you have to break the goal into something very, 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 very small. So somebody came to me one time and said, I want to be a speaker. And I was like, all right, cool. Uh, I know this is going to sound extremely dumb and extremely simple, but we got to get you speaking. I know it's, it sounds too easy. And this person said, okay, what do I do? And I said, well, let me, let me gather some information. Okay, on a scale of one to 10, how outside of your comfort zone is it for you to do a Facebook Live right now? And she said, 12 out of 10, can't do it. Okay, too much. That goal is currently too big for your competence. No stress. On a scale of one to 10, how outside of your comfort zone is it for you to record a video on your phone and show nobody? And she said, zero out of 10, that's easy. Okay, that is way, you're, you're too competent for that. It's too easy, right? That's, that's too easy. The training wheels are there. What about if you recorded a video and you sent it to me? Just me, I won't show anybody, I promise. And... She said, that's probably like a five out of 10. Perfect. That's exactly where you should be. That's exactly where you should be. She did that. And then she gained confidence and competence with the understanding of, wow, it went better than I expected that for a lot of us, this is what happens. We say, I would love to do something, but I can't. And then we don't take action. And when we don't take action, we don't get any feedback. And when we don't get any feedback that thus proves to us that we can't do it in the first place. But if you can inject a little bit of belief, if you can borrow someone's belief and you can say, well, I'm not sure if I can do it well, but I'm going to try. Let me do it with you. You take action. You get feedback that you never would have gotten before. And it breaks the paradigm of I could never do this. And I'm, I'm a I mean, I'm a walking example of that. You know, 1,300 episodes, I never, I never saw that. I never planned for that in the beginning. If I did, I don't know if I ever would have started. For me, it was like, yeah. let me do one episode and see what happens. Like, ah, it went pretty well. You know, I could have asked a better question there. I forgot what I was going to say there. All right, let me get a little better. Let me get a little better. So I think a lot of us are looking at the top of the mountain. We're looking up at the peak of Mount Everest saying, I can never get there. When in reality, nobody starts there. Everybody starts at the bottom and they go to the first base camp. And then maybe they say, ah, that wasn't as bad as I thought. Then they go to the second base camp. So you got to focus on the first checkpoint, not the final checkpoint. That's what I would say. Awesome. That's a great, great answer to, to, to a complicated question for a lot of people, I think. <clears throat> Building confidence to actually, it makes me so sad because I see a lot of people. I talk to a lot of people who, and I don't know if it's especially here in Sweden, uh, more than other places, but I think this is pretty general for most places. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are uh, unhappy, but they're not maybe unhappy enough to make changes in their life. Yeah. Or even if they already have like a plan, like I take this as an example sometimes, like let's say you want to start a barbershop, but then like f first thing that they do usually is and I did this myself. I started my, uh, I started a painting business when I was 20. And the first thing I did is uh, I ran to all my friends. I said, you know, I told them the idea and I ran to my family and I ran to everyone I knew and told them the idea, which in hindsight was really f fucking stupid because none of them were painters or have, or had ever started a business before. Mm -hmm. 
So almost all of them were like, dude, you know, you don't like paperwork. You were never good in school. Like, be careful. Do this and that. Uh, unfortunately, I, I didn't listen to him. I still <laughs> went, went ahead and did it. And it, it went pretty well. You know, it worked. But I think that's what a lot of people do is you want to start a barbershop and you ask everyone except a, an actual barber. Mm. So if you want to be a speaker, ask Kevin, not your mom. It's you know? fair. It's Cause, fair. Because, you know, people who – that's a normal thing to do. You're going to ask your mom or your dad, your brother, your sister, your friends. You're asking someone who has never done it. Mm. So their, um, their view of that is that it's going to be very hard. So they're going to reinforce your belief that you have already, that it is hard. Whereas if you talk to Kevin, he can make it sound like it – I mean, it takes time. It's a lot of hard work, but it's, it's not as hard as you think. Mm. If you start on the right level, start on, um, you know, on a five, like you did with that uh, client that you had. Yep. And that's uh, an important thing to think about, I, I uh, found. Because a lot of pe it's, people don't do that out of, because they don't want you to succeed. I think a lot of your close relatives and friends do that because they're scared that you're going to fail. Yeah. So they're trying to help you, but they're actually pulling you back. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I've realized this, and this has allowed me to have a lot of empathy for the advice I got or for the people who gave me potentially negative advice in the beginning, people don't give you advice based on your competence and, and based on your confidence and based on what you're capable of. They usually give you advice based on their own fears and limiting beliefs and, and experiences. Mm. And again, to your point, a lot, I mean, people are afraid for you, right? I, I remember when I left my job, my grandmother said, you're going to go get another job, right? And I was like, no, I will never punch a time clock for somebody else as long as I live. And I, she must've been terrified. I'm sure she was terrified of like, well, you're going to do a podcast? Like, how does that work? You know, I understand yeah. that now. I'm, contextually, the odds of us making it were pretty low. So statistically, like I understand, but that's really helped me. That's why coaches are so important because, yeah, they can give you advice and they can give you strategy and they can help you get to where you're going faster, but they believe in you more because they most likely believe in themselves more. That's like one of the interesting things about mm -hmm. getting a coach. Even if they just say like, yeah, you can do it. That might be all you need. You just might need somebody to say, yeah, I mean, oh, you want to you wanna turn your podcast into a business? Well, you know, I did it, so I know you can. Instead of somebody saying, yeah. like, who do you know who's turned a podcast into a business? It just, it just completely changes the opportunity. It changes the emotions. It changes the potential. It's something that small can make a huge difference. Oh, for sure. And I, I, um, I've noticed since I started the podcast when I, you know, I, I try to reach up. I try to get people who are a little bit more famous, a, a bit more knowledgeable about things, um, definitely more knowledgeable than I am. And I was shocked to see that most of them are super positive. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't want to come on the show or anything, most of them are like, oh, you're going to make it. You know, they're super positive. They, they try to push you along the way because they know that it's possible because they've done something similar or something that, you know, it's like the saying, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's like people who are further ahead than you will never try to pull you down. Mm. Yeah. Usually that's the case. That's what I find anyways. Yeah. Well, they, they yeah. were where you were once. I, I, a lot of people, I get this all the time. Like, oh, I can't believe you came on my show. You know, it's, this is like my third episode and you're 1300 in. It's like, I don't care. I, I remember what it was like to be there. I know what yeah. that's like. I, I don't. It's it's an hour. It's either way. It's going to be an hour of my time. I, I'm happy to spend yeah. it with, with somebody who wants to talk and is interested and is into self improvement or whatever. It's, uh, yeah. You can't ever forget what it was like. There. I I've been really having this thought recently, and I, I don't know if I'm going to do a post on it. Maybe we'll do an episode. On it, I don't know. But one of the best ways to stay humble is to remember that number one. 99.999% of the human population will never know who you are. No, that's number one. If you just go through the numbers. And number two, if you're 10 years into the journey and now you're making it and people know you, 10 years ago, nobody knew who you were and they probably didn't care what you were doing. That, like, for me, it's super important to remember that because you, one of my clients said this to me one time. He said, Kev, the press is always wrong. You're never as good as they say. You're never as bad as they say. You're usually somewhere right in the middle. That's like, that's such an important thing to understand because it can get to your head. And I think it does for a lot of people. But I also think the people who have grinded and made it, 
see other people like you grinding it and trying to make it. It's like, oh yeah, I remember what it was like to be at that point. Like, yeah, you're doing really good. Like, keep keep going compared to where yeah. where I was at your point in the journey. You're way ahead of where I was. You just got to keep going. But you don't know where you are in the journey because it's your journey. It's it's a very interesting thought process. Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point of view. It's a, and it's an interesting thing to think about. Dude, so uh, another thing I wanted to touch on is, because I think a lot of people want to go somewhere. Uh, a lot of people want to do something that they enjoy more than, you know, their regular fucking job that they, you know, most people walk around and they're okay with doing the job they're doing because it pays the bills, pays for the food. Uh, but they really want to do something else. But a lot of people don't know what that is. Mm. So, I mean, I mean, today, actually, it's it's possible to do almost anything. I mean, there's people making shit tons of money playing Call of Duty. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, today you could literally do almost anything you want. But uh, most people, I would say, are, are a little bit more uh, realistic mm. or like, you know, they don't think that they can achieve that type of goal. But they're looking for something to give them meaning, something they enjoy. I would say purpose, probably. Mm -hmm. And it, it seems to me that you find your purpose. Uh, what's some advice for people who haven't yet found it? Again, I immediately go take a look into your past, figure out what three, four, five of the greatest pains you've ever experienced are, figure out have you found a way to solve those pains yet, and then I would dig into do you have any desire to help other people avoid the pains that have followed you around for life? I, that's one of our mentors, Evan Carmichael. He's, he's big on YouTube. He's, he's very big in our, in our industry. And he says that he says, your purpose comes from your deepest pain. It's like, I never mm. understood that until I sat down and said, Oh, I want to be the type of person. Like I want to be the person I needed when I was at my lowest point. Interesting. So my purpose mm. pretty much came from my deepest pain. The other, there's a couple other questions too that I think are are really, really impactful, and they can they can allow you to think a little bit differently. What is something that you are hyper focused on that you do not believe enough people are focused on? So, like somebody might say, you know, the environment. I am so focused on the environment, and I know, you know, where the most litter is and what's going on here, but nobody's talking about that. Like I got to get more people to talk about that. That maybe that's your purpose. Um, Another one, another good one is what would I find you talking about on a Friday night? You know, I'm sure you'd probably be talking about this, right? So like, okay, that's, yeah. that's a sign. Um, what's another good one? What makes you incredibly sad? My, my business partner's girlfriend went to the Great Barrier Reef and quickly realized that the Great Barrier Reef is more of a cemetery now. And that changed her perspective on the environment and pollution and being more sustainable forever. That became one of her purposes because it made her so damn sad that it really shifted her paradigm. So that's, that's a good thing to, to think about. And here's the other interesting thing. I think a lot, of us, a lot of us have a more clear understanding of our purpose than we realize. When things get messy for us, it's when we talk about the vehicle. My purpose has always been to help people. I used to do baseball camps when I was in high school with the little kids. I love that. I love doing that. You know, I used to do that every year, and then I used to do it on the side too. I remember when I started the podcast, I would coach people in my DMs or on Snapchat. I didn't know what I was doing, but they would reach out for help. I've always wanted to do that. But the interesting thing that happens is we say, well, I know what my purpose is. Like, I feel like my purpose is to help people. I don't know what the vehicle is. How am I going to make that profitable? Mm -hmm. How am I going to turn that into a career? How am I going to pay my bills? I think that's where things get a little bit wonky because for a lot of us, if you feel passionate as hell about Call of Duty, you might say, yeah, but there's no way. I mean, how am I going to make money playing Call of Duty? Well, now there's a bunch of people who have done it, so it proves to you that that vehicle is sustainable. But I think that's where a lot of people get stuck. I think we have a, a deeper understanding of what our purpose is, but anytime we connect what do I do with that purpose? How do I deliver that to the world? I think we get caught up. So last question I, I advise or I suggest people ask, it's been powerful for me. If I gave you a billion dollars tomorrow and you had to do something in the service of others, you can't just sit on the beach and drink margaritas all day. I'm sure that would get boring after a while. 
It had to be in the service of others in the improvement of humanity. What would you do? That's a good place to start because you already have the money. So you don't have to worry about the, the profitability of whatever you're doing. Playing Call of Duty is probably not on that list for anyone. Because <laughs> it's probably not a service to others. Mm. Maybe it is. I don't know. It's entertainment. It could be. Yeah, it's, en- it's entertainment. Yeah. I mean, there's a shit ton of people watching. Uh, what's that thing? Is it t- Twitch? Mm-hmm. Is that, that's where they, yeah. they play games That's online? huge. That's huge. But even like, yeah. even a musician, it's like, is, you know, is Taylor Swift in the, in the service of others? Yeah, it's entertainment. She makes people mm-hmm. feel like they're part of something. She makes people feel understood. She makes people feel safe. So, yeah, it, as long as it's bringing something to someone, I would consider that uh, of service. That's actually an awesome question that uh, I've heard it phrased in a different way. I think it was Alan Watts who was talking about Mm. that. But if I gave you a billion dollars, what would you do in service of others? That's that's a really great question to ask yourself, I think. I think it forces a deeper thought where because I've said that to people before without the of or in service of others. Like if I gave you a billion dollars today what would you do forever and they're like oh i'd find a beach and a margarita it's like okay <laughs> okay understandable right you're you're using the parameters of the question to to form an answer if it had to be in the service of others what would you do and then they sit with that it's like well you know i've always wanted to open a dog shelter it's like oh interesting okay why can't you i don't know it's not, it's expensive ah there it is right that that's where mm. it kind of we get tied up because i think for a lot of us purpose just seems like this this insurmountable mountain of idealistic life it's like i could never do that i could never do that but this here's my thought around that one of my favorite quotes no matter what you're doing no matter where you're going from to where you want to get to there is some level of mud you must crawl through so for some people the mud is working a job that they dislike until they can retire unfortunately that's that's a lot of mud for people other mud is working a job that you don't like for five years while on the weekends you go take pictures of stuff that you enjoy and then build up your portfolio and then try to do that. That's mud. You're going to have to work more and it's going to be stressful, but you're making progress. Maybe mud is leaving your job completely if you have the circumstantial allowance to do it and going all in on being a podcaster and being broke. Like maybe that's your mud. There is going to be mud between where you currently are and where your purpose is. It's just a matter of how much mud are you willing to crawl through and have you identified the mud? I think that's probably the, the first question. Yeah, identifying the problems. And uh, that can be hard to do because a lot of the times you, you won't even know what the problems are until yeah. you meet them. Uh, but on the other hand, in today's world, I think when people ask the question, how do I do this or how do I do that? I usually go, well, have you Googled it? <laughs> Like, you know, like it, there's literally a step-by-step instruction for almost anything. Mm. So usually that's not the problem. It's, the problem is not that you don't know how to do it because you can learn how to do it yeah. step-by-step. Problem is here, mm-hmm. you know, in your head. Yeah. You're, you're like be touched on the self-belief and, and stuff like this. I think sure. belief is the biggest thing. I really do because if, yeah. if you don't, I don't know who, where the quote came from, but if you don't believe it's possible, it's not. Because you won't try. You'll yeah. never try. I mean, imagine if, you're, imagine if you're in a circle and there's an eight-foot wall up around you and you, you're like, there's no way I could ever get over that. That's it. You're not going to try. You're not going to build a ladder from sticks. You're not going to, whatever, build a rope from, from vines. It just, when you, when you decide that it's not possible, all of the opportunities and options become invisible. And again, yeah. that was my biggest struggle. I... I had many people, I'm very blessed, I had many people who believed in me, I just didn't believe in myself. And that was really the the biggest thing holding me back. Mm, I see, I see. On something else that you touched, a lot of people, you know, if you gave them a billion dollars, I'd go to a beach and drink drink, uh, margaritas for the rest of my life. I, uh, I used to live in Australia. And this actually, I think when something switched in my head a little bit, because it's a fantastic place to live, and me and my my now uh, wife lived it was not even a five minute walk to one of the most beautiful beaches in the world Mm. it was amazing and in the last uh, we were there for a couple of years in the last two months um, I had nothing to do nothing 
I was just waiting for her to get home every day. Mm. And for people who say, you know, if I had a billion dollars, I just sit on the beach. I've I did that. I was lucky enough to get to do that at a young age. To realize that that life fucking sucks. <laughs> I I've never been as depressed and low. I like I, I would sit inside and play Candy Crush almost, you know, all day. Mm. Cuz the beach is only that nice, you know, for a while. Yeah. It's it's if you have not no meaning to your day, no doesn't have to be a grand purpose like something you're trying to change the world but something to do that life it, it's not something I'd recommend for people mm. and I'm really fortunate to have experienced that at a young age because I think a lot of people what they do when I meet people like that older older folks you work your whole life and then in, in the end in the, in the you know last 10 five years you start looking forward to your time off and what happens to a lot of people is you quit and you have nothing. Mm. No, you have no hobbies, no, pa no nothing you're passionate about, nothing new that you want to do. And what happens? You just sit in your house watching TV alone, if if you are alone. But you know, a lot of old people unfortunately are. Mm. And you know, I I can tell the ones that I meet, it's it's not a nice thing, you know. And I don't think it matters if you're in an apartment or on a beach, that much. Yeah, I don't think it does. Progress. Human beings, human beings respond really well to progress. And I, I think yeah. that's what happens, right? Is like the interesting thing about purpose and a mission and a passion, whatever it is, a journey, it never really ends. That's the interesting thing is like you don't retire from a purpose because a purpose is almost yeah. something, it's something you become, not something you can accomplish. I'm never going to get a trophy that says I have the most successful holistic self-improvement podcast of all time that most likely isn't going to happen maybe somebody will send me one and that'll be awesome but <laughs> but that's not what it's about it's about i think a lot of people feel like life is passing them by because it's almost like they're not making progress towards what they ultimately want to make progress towards and that's where i think a lot of people get stuck but to our original point you have to have some level of belief in yourself to set goals because if you don't have the, enough belief to say you know what i want to have I want to have a podcast that positively influences people. You've got to believe you can do it because if you don't believe you can do it, you're never going to start. So it really is. It's kind of this paradox of, I don't know, I think purpose is the thing that we're all chasing, but it's one of the things that you can't really ever catch. In a way, you're kind of in it for life. It's like, I'm never going to, I could never go back to a job after this. No way. I know what it's like to be on the other side and like get to do what I love every day and get to talk to people and be interviewed and have my own business. Like it would be so hard to go back because I wouldn't, not just because of the circumstances, because I wouldn't feel like I was making progress towards the thing I wanted to make progress towards. That's the, that's the interesting thing. So a good question I think is where do I, where am I craving progress that I'm not making? That's a great question to ask because it's going to, again, it's going to hopefully raise your awareness to things you might not see yet. Yeah, for sure. Uh, uh, I was thinking of a re kind of a rephrasing of that. Mm. And I wanted to ask you about, um, I would say, not necessarily mental illness, but it seems to, like today, if you compare today with like maybe 50, 60, 70 years ago, it seems like people are... We're doing much, much better, but we feel much worse. Mm. And I have a theory which kind of connects to what you just said is that uh, humans are, what did you say? Humans are. Um, uh, which I was talking about progress. They're, we're motivated yeah, we by progress. We need progress, yeah. right? So my thought is that humans are problem solvers. Mm. And in today's society, uh, we don't really have that many problems. Like, we're always going to have problems, but we don't have any serious problems. Mm. And so I think this could lead to us being lost because we don't know what to solve for. Mm. And and this gives us a, a sort of a feeling of meaninglessness, I guess. Yeah, that's fair. I think we have and, manufactured progress. When you think about it, yeah. like... Again, we're talking about Call of Duty, and I have nothing against Call of Duty. I love it. I'm terrible at <laughs> yeah. it, so I don't play very often. But video games, movies, 
uh, Netflix series, all those things, they are designed to take you on a journey that represents progress. The problem is you're just on for the ride. You're not making that progress. That's the interesting yeah. thing. There's a lot of manufactured progress because of social media and the digital world we live in where I think that it's almost it's easy to get lost in the fact that you're living life on a screen at times, yeah. right? Like if you and I get off here and I do nothing else for the rest of the day, none of this matters. And nothing I've said even matters if I just get off and I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to go watch Netflix for the rest of the day. I'm not actually yeah. doing what I said I was going to do. Yeah, it's very it's very weird. I'm sorry I interrupted you, though. Go ahead. No, no, it's fine. It's fine. You're on the same line of thinking yeah. as I am. And it, it just seems to me like today, what a lot of people, I think, this not might not be the case for everybody, but this is a thought I've been playing with in my head for a while now, is that because we don't have any serious problems, most of us, mm. we don't have any problems like before. You know, we all have food, shelter, you know, uh, hopefully families. Actually, a lot of people are kind of lonely today, but uh, with our, like, basic needs covered, we have to create our own problems to get the progression that you're talking about. Mm. So, like, I start a podcast because, well, for one, it's what I want to do. But also, it's a, it's a, it's a fun problem for me to solve. Because mm. when I started, and even now, like, I'm, I'm like, I suck at this. This is a problem. If I want to succeed, I have to solve that problem. Mm. So I'm going to make, I'm going to do 100 episodes, no matter what, and try to get as good as I can. Like, I created that problem for myself. And I think today, a, a lot of people are, it's almost like a lot of people are waiting for a problem to hit them so that they can solve it and feel meaning that way. But I think in today's world, at least in the Western societies, sometimes you have to find or create a problem for yourself mm. or even on some level, scare yourself. I, I scare myself in, in a way like I talk about this too. Like a lot of people are scared of change or scared to do, to open that barbershop. They're scared of doing, you know, going after the, the, the goal. But look at it the opposite way. I'm way more scared of what will my life look like in five or 10 years if I don't change anything. No. You know, that is a big problem for me and I have to solve for my future. Mm. So now I have to change something. Yeah. But I think most of these things are, like I said, there are ways to do almost anything today. What's stopping most of us is, is in our head, in our mind. And uh, I hope people like you, and I, I, I'm sure you already do, and I hope I can have an impact on people's uh, people's way of living in, in this kind of way that with the stuff that we're talking about. Mm. You know, to... One of the things that I think I've come to realize is one of the problems is a lot of the people who make it to the top of the top of the top of the top, especially that, that give advice, they've never had belief problems. So they, mm, yeah. they kind of can't give valuable advice to the vast majority of humans. It's almost like, you know, I love Gary V, big fan of Gary V. But Gary yeah. V, I don't know if he's ever not believed in himself. So I don't know if, <laughs> if he knows what it's like to have self-doubt to be affected by losing. We talk about fail forward all the time, but like in the beginning, I hated failure. I mean, I still do. I don't like it. I don't wake yeah. up saying like, let me go mess something up today so I can learn the lesson. That's not how I'm yeah. wired. My business partner is. But in the beginning mm. when we connected, he couldn't give me advice because he didn't understand. Like, Alan, I understand it's okay for me to be negative in my bank account, but I'm not thinking of it the same way as you. He's like, well, entrepreneurs are always broke. It's like, no, no, no. I understand what you're saying, but it's different for me. You don't, you don't yeah. understand what my human experience is, just like I don't understand what your human experience is. That's one of the, that's one of the interesting things is like there's a lot of people out there who have 10 out of 10 belief in themselves who are trying to teach people who have 2 out of 10 belief in themselves, but they're telling them what they would tell themselves. And that's why it's – I think belief is the biggest thing in the world. I really, really, really do because if you don't have it, the advice you get is just not going to land unless it's from somebody who says, yeah, no, trust me. I know what it's like to not believe in myself. And uh, here's a track record of the experiences I've had. Then at least you can believe it's possible for you. Where if somebody's like, I knew I was going to make it here. It's like, all right, your advice now to me is, is not null and void, but it's probably not as powerful. 
Mm, I see. That's some good advice. So actually ask people who've had the same problems that mm-hmm. that you're having. Because you can read a book about it or you can ask someone like Gary Vee or someone else like that. But if they haven't gone through that exact thing or something very similar to that, yeah. it might be very different advice than what you would get from someone who's actually had that problem. Yeah. 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 It's kind of the same thing as uh, I was touching on before. If you're going to start a barbershop, ask a barber. 100%. Don't ask your, gr- your grandma, you know. <laughs> Unless your grandma <laughs> knows stuff about business and barbershops. But well, yeah. <laughs> she probably, well, I won't, I won't um, blanket statement. I won't blanket statement, but she, she most <laughs> likely doesn't. Probably not. <laughs> That's awesome, dude. Is there anything you want to plug? Before I let you go, no. If you if you like what we talked about today, that's pretty much our podcast in a nutshell. We we do seven episodes a week, a week on this uh, holistic self improvement. So just search Next Level University. You'll find us. We're on all the platforms. We're on YouTube. But no, other than that, I'm grateful for the time. I'm grateful for the conversation. Uh, I'm excited to see where you end up in the future because again, I I remember what it was like to be where you are, and I'm proud of you for doing it. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much for coming on, and I appreciate the the support. And I definitely have you back on if you're willing to come on in the future. Whenever you uh, want. Check check up on me and see how I'm doing. I will. I will for sure. And thank you for all the great advice. I'm sure the listeners and myself uh, can take a lot out from this uh, conversation. You know. And please, to everyone listening, go in and check Kevin out. We'll link all your websites and everything that you do in the description. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, buddy. We'll talk soon. All right. Take care. You too.